Hello everybody. This is Arokya Das, your zoology faculty from the Department of Biology. And we are going through Chapter 4, Animal Kingdom, Session 10, Phylum Mollusca. The previous class we studied Phylum Arthropoda, which was the largest phylum in animal kingdom. So let me share the screen and start today's class. Well, dear students, we are heading towards the last phylum of, towards the last phylums, another two phylums are there. We are getting towards the end of phyl, uh, uh, phylums belonging to non-chordata. Mollusca is one of the important phylum because it shares some unique characters. And apart from that, if you recall, in my previous class, phylum Arthropoda, I mentioned that they are the largest phylum in animal kingdom. Why? Because if you go towards any part of the globe, on any part of the earth, you find an arthropod there. They are modified in various form. They have different adaptations. And I also said you, insects belongs to phylum arthropoda. That's why if you can see, they are the only phylum in non chordata or invertebrates which has the which have the capability of flight or they can fly. You go towards polar region, you go towards desert polar region, you may think there are no insects and all fine. If you get into the water, you may see many crustaceans or many arthropods, aquatic arthropods present in the polar regions. You may think uh, in desert, you may not find any arthropod, but you can see in many movies or you may be knowing scorpion, spiders and all are found in deserts also and if you see like Mysore and any other, uh, other uh, habitats you can find innumerable number of arthropods that's why they were called as the largest phylum of animal kingdom coming back to today's class phylum mollusca mollusca if you take they have mentioned clearly it is the second largest phylum in animal kingdom after arthropods they are terrestrial and also they can be aquatic. Terrestrial means they can live on land, means they are living, most of the mollusks are living on land and also most of them are found in water. Before, so these are common terms, terrestrial and aquatic. Before that, we'll try to know what is this mollusk? What does this term mollusk mean? Mollusk means Soft, soft bodied organisms. The organisms which have very soft body, they are called as mollusks. There are other parameters also to consider an animal in mollusca phylum. We'll go through that one. Hope oh, this point is clear. There is the second largest phylum. So, which is the first largest phylum? It is Arthropoda. So they can, they, most of them are found on terrestrial as well as in aquatic habitats. Habitats means what? The place where they live. Okay. A common point. They exhibit organ system level of body organization. You can see from past couple of uh, phylum, we know that they already have organ system level of body organization. So this goes on continuing. Okay, and this is not a very peculiar and important point because first point is actually if you see this point is very important, second largest phylum. Okay, second largest phylum. So they have organ system level of body organization. So we, we can expect or we can see most of the organs and organ system are formed to perform their uh, respective functions in the body. Yeah, very important point now. In the third point only, we have clubbed many points. They are bilaterally symmetrical. From phylum platyhelminthes only, we are speaking about bilateral symmetry. So it is not a surprise to know they have bilateral symmetry. What does it mean? If you cut the organism only through the central median axis, you will get two equal halves, wherein one half is the mirror image of another. Only through the central median axis, if you cut the organism, you get two equal halves, okay? That have mentioned many number of times bilateral symmetry. And I'm again and again telling not to give the expansion or not to give the definition at this moment while studying the general characters. 
we have to just mention they are bilaterally symmetrical organisms and they are triploblastic in nature triploblastic also from phylum uh, platyelminthes i am mentioning this triploblastic condition is where uh, what the organism's body is made up of three germ layers namely outer ectoderm inner endoderm and middle mesoderm again we are not going to give the definition here we are just mentioning they are bilaterally symmetrical and triploblastic in nature i also highlighted to tell what whenever we mention about whenever you mention about triploblastic body condition the next immediate point that you should comment on is what on the coelom condition on the coelom condition now from earthworm from annelida itself the organisms are having true body cavity so we call them as coelomates we call them as coelomates so what does a coelomate refers to a coelomate can also be called as u coelomate and what does a u coelomate refers to the organism having a true body cavity which is lined which is surrounded by mesoderm layer so the third point itself is having three important points clubbed together bilateral symmetry triploblastic and u coelomate condition there is little segmentation this is very very important because from phylum annelida we spoke the body will be divided equally into many segments many equal sized segments called as metamers and when we came to arthropoda we saw anterior few segments were fusing to form head region middle segments were fusing to form a thorax region and the posterior part of the body segments fused to form abdominal region so the, once again there was clear cut demarcation between head thorax and abdomen but in annelida it was not there annelida only segments were there arthropoda we saw advanced character that is fusion of segments but when you come here you can tell it is once again something like a primitive point because here segmentation is not that much clear in most of the organism most of the organisms not in all the organisms so there is only little segmentation seen over the body hope these three points are clear for you we'll move to the next point body is covered by calcareous shell if you recall this word calcareous calcareous refers to calcium carbonate when we were speaking about seal and traits their body is having a uh, that body is made up of calcareous uh, material called as coral right i also said that is kept as a uh, show piece inside aquarium and all the hard calcium carbonate structure so here also body is covered by a calcareous shell need not be body may be covered by a calcareous shell if the body is covered above body melgade cover agittu ant helidre external anta karitivi external shell body holgade ittu ant helidre if that shell is inside the body we call it as internal shell here they have not mentioned in your textbook they have not mentioned that uh, mollusk have external shell as well as internal shell i'll give you an idea first and then i'll come to this point again there are few example in front of you on the screen now most of them you will be knowing only maybe uh, you will be uh, what not knowing will be this one the third one this one yes this one which i am highlighting now that is chiton you have to just mention it is chiton but here you can see the shell showing segmentation and other animals if you see here you cannot see this is a slug this is not showing any segmentation and if you see this nail basunula okay here you can see a shell adr mele ondu shanka shell ide that is made up of calcium carbonate this organism you see this is also having a shell it is also having calcium carbonate this oyster pearl oyster or you can also take fresh water mussel kappe chippu ant heltirala adu this is also made up of calcium carbonate and if you see this squid this is a squid okay loligo we also call it as squid if you see inside the body inside body olagade it will be having a shell like this 
inside this it will be having a shell we also call this uh, squid as cuttlefish this the cuttlefish bone will be foam like it is a calcium carbonate foam like and if you have come across love birds in your house and somewhere else they use this foam to feed those love birds samundri kaf they use that word okay we ne you need not tell all this information i'm just giving you some general knowledge that's it what i want to tell you from this uh, photos or the photographs of this mollusk is first one if you see this nail everybody might have come across it is having an external shell made up of calcium carbonate here chiton the third one it is also made up of an external shell calcium carbonate here also this one also oyster also and finally if you see cuttlefish from outside you cannot see any shell but inside the body there is an internal shell so external shell and internal shell they are not mentioned in your textbook just keep knowing what are these structures body is covered by a cal uh, calcareous shell body need not be if you take octopus and all there is no calcium carbonate uh, shell outside the body but most of the uh, mollusk will be having now you can ask me a question why this external shell why because hence the term refers soft bodied organisms soft body means everybody means everybody in the sense all the animals surrounding them the predators would love to go and attack and eat them easily because it is very soft to eat they have to be covered you just see uh, if there is a snail or a, yeah snail or basunula whenever it is moving you just try to disturb it will um, retract it will take inside the head and other body parts why to protect itself so that shell will be protecting it understood so and it is unsegmented with a distinct head muscular fit and visceral hump dear students i would like if you mark this point as very important because these terms will not come across the body of a mollusk body of a generally mollusk will be having three important parts like in arthropoda head thorax and abdomen here if you take mollusca the body will be divisible into head muscular foot and visceral hump what is this visceral hump visceral hump is a collection of visceral organs with some muscles mamsad mudde okay a mass of muscles visceral organs okay it is just a clumping or combination or a group of visceral organs and some muscles <coughs> we'll see you are if you see the second diagram this is the first diagram will not concentrate now we'll see this second diagram okay now this outer structure this the one which i am marking now this is a shell this one this is a shell shell shankuddu calcium carbonate hard shell uh, this organism what i am showing you is fresh water mussel fresh water mussel in urdu you tell it as sippi kannadadalli kappe chippu ant heltare or pearl oyster you can take this diagram is of a fresh water mussel fresh water mussel the outer hard structure is called as shell and inside the body inside the body now i'll round it off idu this much okay this one which have rounded off forms the visceral part of the body visceral mass mamsada mudde okay and this part head is not that much clear but in snail you can see this you can also assume it as a snail no problem this is the blueprint okay so this region will form the head visceral organs the round one which have encircled at the center of the body this one is visceral mass and you can see bottom a muscular foot these are the three components of any mollusk if you take basic thing but in octopus and all there will be slight changes but generally the body of an octopus sorry the body of a mollusk will be divided into head 
visceral mass and a muscular foot okay these are the three important parts of a mollusk and one more thing i wanted to tell you concentrate here i'll change the color now i'm using blue now this is what i said is a shell right and this from here this much is visceral mass i said visceral mass having all the visceral organs this in between is shell go mate visceral mass madhyadalli okay at the center there is a thin skin like covering on the visceral mass a thin skin like covering and that thin skin like covering we call it as mantle i am rounding it off mantle in case of the organisms having shell there is a shell there is visceral organs in between there is a thin skin like covering called as mantle which forms the protection for the visceral organs okay now if you see octopus and all the outer covering itself is called as mantle because they do not have any shell here if you see this octopus if you see the outer covering itself will call it as mantle but in the ca in case of organisms having shell their visceral organs will be covered over by a thin skin like structure called as mantle and concentrate here i'll use another color now i'll go with uh, a different color like um, i'll go with i'll go with purple now the space the space between the shell and the visceral organ is called as mantle cavity so there is a shell inside visceral organ and this visceral organ is covered by a thin flap or a thin skin like structure called as mantle and this mantle is found where in a mantle cavity what is a mantle cavity the space between the shell and the visceral organ is called as the mantle cavity so here we come across that word mantle cavity see here the word mantle cavity i'll read the point again a soft and spongy layer of skin forms a mantle over the visceral hump visceral hump visceral mass is both fine okay both are same in between there is a mantle cavity having yeah this is very important point again in the mantle cavity what we find we find is feather like gills very important gills means you know in fish and all you come across now what is the function of gills respiration in the mantle cavity of mollusk there is feather like it is not feather i have put a dash in between you can see feather tara it is not a feather or the feather alla understood feather like gills which are respiratory as well as excretory in function a very unique and important point of phylum mollusca so there is a shell inside there is a visceral hump or visceral mass the visceral mass is covered by mantle and the space between shell and that mantle is mantle cavity in the mantle cavity you also find feather like gills which helps in respiration as well as excretory in function this is a important point when we study mollusca make it a note sixth one is common because from class 2 we are studying the same point they have open type of circulatory system so what does it mean we are not going to write the meaning here we are just mentioning but still what does it mean it the open type of circulatory system is they do not have bell, blood vessels that's it okay the anterior ed region as sensory tentacles not all the organisms but Uh, in this diagram you can see in this photo uh, head region if you take this uh, snail i am circling it off it is having tentacles can you see this is the tentacles slug also you see 
I'm circling it off. Head region is having tentacles, and we'll see this one here. Octopus, you can see head is directly attached with a uh, foot, which is a muscular foot, and visceral organs are found inside the body. So head region is having sensory tentacles, and even you can see this squid also, cuttlefish. Here also head is having sensory tentacles. Here also it is having sensory tentacles. Hope that point is clear for you. Head region has sensory tentacles. So this again, this is a unique point for our phylum mollusca. Now speaking about the next point, the mouth has file like file means in a book. Okay. File like it is not a file. Once again, whenever we uh, speak in biology, needle like, file like, feather like, cup like, they are not cup. It is a type means cup thara. It is not exactly a cup. So only we put a dash in between. You can see feather like also we have put a dash. And when we come about a uh, uh, file like rasping organ, see here like here also we have put dash here also. File thara rasping organ. It is a rasping organ. And tell rasping in English uh, exactly that is not a term. Grating turiyodo turiyodo uh, coconut grate martirala thara. Tengil kai turi thala thara. I'll show you a photo, uh, a diagram of that. Yeah, this one, the diagram one. So here mouth. This is the mouth. Okay. Here you can see this structure. Okay, this structure, I am circling it off. This structure is that file like rasping organs, turiyotara, grating type. And this structure is called as radula, a very important point. The structure is called as radula, and this helps the organism in feeding. This helps the organism in feeding. You can see here. This helps the organism in feeding and the structure is called as radula, a very important point again. Hope this is clear for you. Don't worry, no diagrams are there. If you read this general character point and write the same, that is more than enough. So no need to worry. The dioecious. Monaceous and dioecious, I just spoke to you while speaking about uh, sexes present in individuals, right? So here, male and female will be separate, and they are egg laying. They are egg laying. Oviparous means egg laying. We have come across this one twice in previous phylum, and in the same point, you can see the sex condition they have given. They have given oviparous egg laying condition. They do not give birth to egg ones. They lay eggs in the water. And indirect development, what does it mean? They undergo larval stages to become an adult. They undergo larval stages during their metamorphosis before forming the adult. So that is indirect development. They are not mentioned about fertilization here. So we are not writing that extra point. What is there in the textbook? We are just sticking on. And examples they are given octopus, nail, muscles. But if you See in your study material or textbook, I think there are 8 to 10 examples with scientific name also is given. So you need not worry. You can just read the common name, not the scientific name. You can now only you will be knowing like snail, octopus, squid, freshwater mussel, oyster. Okay. And here the third one you can see chiton. Better you go with the example what is there in the study material only. Don't write. The examples what you know. Got? You may be knowing, but for example, if you go to second PUC and if you write new examples, the examiner may not be knowing and you may lose the marks. They can defend because it is they what they, they can tell that we are sticking only onto the textbook information. So better go on with the examples, what is there in the study material, and do not read the scientific name until I tell you. Don't make it complicated. So this is, uh, dear students, this is uh, phylum mollusca for you. 
and uh, this screen what is there in front of you you can pause and now you can take a screenshot or make a note of it these are the points what is there in the study material i want you to replicate this in the uh, study uh, notes once the college opens you may have to submit this and we may have to allot some marks for you so use a book a good pen blue pen is better in biology and uh, pencil scale and write it neatly and submit it when college opens signing off from today's class session 10 animal kingdom chapter 4 thank you take care